well, you can't tailor book by its cover. You can meet a, a, a person and think, oh, they seem nice. And then a couple of days later and think, oh, they're not as nice as what you think. And the same goes for children. Um, I love children. And I think if you talk tidy to them and um, respect them, I think they in turn respect you. This, this particular project, this one's um, an intergenerational project, so it's actually developing some balance between young people and old people and their, their ideas of identity, their ideas of Murpha. It's putting the two generations together and getting some ideas that emanate from that. My nan's elderly and she's a really nice person, but you have some the moan and going over anything just because they've got problems. It doesn't mean no other people haven't got problems. There's teenagers and teenagers, if they've been brought up the right way, if they listen to their parents. Some young people can be intimidated and can mean it, and then other people don't do it on purpose. You can't discipline children, and if you don't discipline them when they're children, it's impossible to do it as teenagers, I think. Yes, there's differences between you know, the older people's childhoods and the, their childhoods that they are living now. Building bridges between communities is so, so important and beautiful. I think that there's been a lot of negative um, media about the Merthyr area, so I think our job is to really try and break down those perceptions to look at the positive things and, and really celebrate those, um, those positives. Um, I'm Catherine, Catherine Phelps. I'm the scheme manager of Horrid Close in Pendaran. It's Merthyr Valley's homes complex. It's a sheltered scheme with 27 bungalows and two flats on. It's independent living, but some have carers, some have cleaners, some have um, meals and wheels. I just love seeing them every day, speaking to them, listening to their stories, helping them. Hi, my name is Mike Church, and I'm involved with the project as a writer. Uh, having worked with Merthyr Valley's Homes before in a previous project before Christmas. Made a decision at the beginning as to whether to um, have the people writing or whether I'd really be uh, the scribe for them. I'll throw out a couple of ideas, be it childhood, be their thoughts of Merthyr. Different people would be saying different lines and I'm writing ten to the dozen, getting them all down and really, it is really just putting down the things that they've they've said and it, it but it, it works you give it a little rhythm with um, repeating some lines and it, it really works Mike asks us different questions and then somewhat you'll pick one word up and then all of a sudden he start and then it goes from there on to another one and in the end he got a good poem he have fair play very surprised viewer what, what I've tried to do over the last couple of weeks is I've tried to put, and this is something that one of you, Dilwyn's offered to read when we're up in the youth club, but it's a, it's a sort of rappy type thing of all the stuff that we've done over the week. So you recognize some of the things, including the Crabbit Old Woman one that we read. Well, I've been brought up in Pentrevach and Merthyr is my hometown. And wherever I've gone in the world, Merthyr is always home to me. I love Merthyr. I love its history, I love the bones of it, I love everything about Merthyr. Come to Merthyr, come to the pound shops where everyone stops and asks, how much is this and how much is that? They say we're old and cold, put out to grass with a bus pass. He is excellent, fair play, he involves everybody. You know, very, very good. We've been going over our experiences of our childhood. And it's been wonderful because we've reincarnated some of our lovely memories and it's made us feel young. We don't really feel old, you see. We look it, but we don't feel it inside. Inside of us is the young person. It's covered in wrinkles now and extra fat and things, but underneath there's that old heart still beating and there's the old desires and the old yearnings to participate in life and to be appreciated and to be recognised for what we are. T 
teenage years, those moody, broody teenage years, time back when there was no pleasure, no adverse and no sex. You experimented yourself and found your feet, if you were lucky, starting work at 15. Until then, it was short trousers and red, raw legs. When life revolved around church and chapel, then we had rock and roll. Father thought it was awful. Couldn't play it on Sundays in those moody, broody teenage years. Your father might give in at 16 and buy a radiogram if he was lucky. I remember going to the youth club at 15 wearing shiny lip gloss and my father scrubbing my lips when I came home. Girls wore socks until they started work. Then stockings with tight elastic garters. Smoking was the big thing. We all smoked following the film stars on the billboards. You could buy one cigarette at a time those moody, broody teenage years. Well, so the Youth Project um, is a drop-in youth project for young people. It's a project that is inclusive to all. Basically, we're open four days a week, um, four nights. We believe in being like an organic centre, so a lot of our youth workers have come through as young people. Young people are capable of loads of things. It's just making them believe themselves that they can do it. And it's just helping them. It might be little steps, but it's helping them find what they are good at. First of all, we'll start with looking at some of the things we did last week. I'll read it out to you here. No, I've got a copy. We're in for Sighted Youth this evening and we're working with local rapper Rufus Mufasa and this is our second session up here and the young people are now writing rap poetry. Everyone seems to be up for it so we'll just see how it goes. I want to be Casanova, a big-headed poser. He looks like he should be on a Calvin Klein poster. <laughs> well, we talked about um, things that affect young people in their communities, in their schools. Um, lots of things came up about social networking, so many characters about where they live, you know, some of the things came up. It's just, uh, I wish I could come here for a week. We'll do this one on the Pad Mafia one. So what I need you to do is really dump me up. If you see the Pad Mafia, best be whatever you do, remember not to. If you see the Pad Mafia... I think Merthyr is very uh, stigmatised and young people are as well in Merthyr. There's a, there's a very, very, very small minority of bad young people. I think every young person got a bit of good dinner. I'm Terry Beechin. I've been eight years a resident now of Orab Cross. Oh, it's just, I used to play around, but I used to do a lot of cycling, like my warden and her husband. It's different today. I, the youngsters are so active today, I don't think they've got enough play places for them. Some are good, some are bad. It's the same, well, I think it's the same in all generations today. But a lot of the youngsters today are really good. I don't know what makes them bad, but uh, I think it's drink, drugs. I do honestly believe that. I enjoy it, but I'd enjoy it more if there was other places to go. They just think that we're all bad or less young people. I just think they're scared when they see gangs of us on the street, but we can't help that because we have nowhere to go. Because we all live in the same area, we shouldn't be scared of anyone. They say we're old and cold, with aches and pains and chilblings, all wrinkles and sprinkles and sprinkles of talcum powder. <laughs> While I wheeze and sneeze and dribble and scribble thoughts on the page, it takes an age. They say we're old and cold. We were young too, let me tell you. Come to Merthyr, come to the pound shops, where everyone stops and asks, how much is this? How much is that? It's a pound shop! You
Don't stop to ask. Focus on the task in hand. They say we're old and cold. Put out the grass with a bus pass. But you were young too, let me tell you. We used to rebel and could tell a tale or two of smoking and stockings and monkey parades. Not your age back then. We had rock and roll deep in our soul. We respected the priests and teachers and listened to chapel preachers. If my parents knew now what I did then, way back when I was young, I wouldn't be here now. They say we're old and cold, so open your eyes wide and see. Not a crabbed Merthyr person. See me. <laughs> We lived next door to uh, drug dealers and we hadn't been subjected to bullying until then. And when they moved in, they told us that now the neighbourhood belonged to them. Bullying's a terrible thing. I, I got bullied. It's not nice luck. And we saw bullying and it was completely alien to us. And I think with loss of health and strength, you become fearful. It was like, it was like scared to go to school. I was, but then got kicked out. Then, and now I'm in purple or fear in it. You know, you are have great limitations. You can't run. You can't hide. You can't get away from the noise, which often can be very frightening in the early hours. Certain parts of Merthyr, you do feel a bit of danger, but other than that, right? The reputation, I think because people just say it's mostly really bad. But it's actually not. They, they don't come here often enough to give it a bad reputation. Well, obviously I like, I love living here, like, but there's always other places better, than I. Well, you do think it, because you hear so much about Rodis today, you know? And we have had one or two around here. We have, in some of the houses, they put all the youngsters in and that's it. And that's where the drugs start. Well, I've always said, uh, clothes are nothing. Um, as you're saying about um, their hoodies and all that, you've got to know, I've known quite a few children that looks rough, and you'd say, oh God, he looks rough, kind of thing like that. And they're probably they're the nicest kids that you could meet. We see gangs with blue hoods up, we're not going to think that we're doing anything good with our odds up. We think we're going to do things wrong and then they'll be scared and then they'll phone the police probably and then we'll get in trouble if we've been on the streets. Uh, plan for today is to work with the younger and, and the older people um, together. Uh, up until now we've been holding sessions with them, just basically capturing their, their memories and their thoughts about the birth area, about being young, about being old, about their perceptions of each other. The stories that the older people were telling us the other week were a bit naughty and so like definitely if the young people went up then they had a joint session I think they'd be able to relate to a lot to what each other is saying. They come down to Horeb about once a month and they're a nice group and they're very respectful to us which I like. I think lots of people view older people just as old, don't want to get involved with them. But we have set up an event with the Forsythia group and they absolutely love it. They get on great. They talk about uh, their lives. The youths talk about their lives and how different it is to when they were young. I'm coming along to Horror Close and we are in the day centre. We've just seen a little bit of some of the stuff the other group have been creating, which is amazing. So they're going to ask each group 10 questions. So the young people are devising a list of 10 questions they'd like to ask the older people, and the older people are doing the same to ask the younger people 10 questions too. What do you think about young people these days? What do you think they get up to? I worry that they'll be on either drugs or be drinking. I worry that that will cloud their minds and they won't see things in reality as they really are. And I, I also don't think they get a fair chance in life these days because when jobs do come up, there's so many trying for them. 
no matter where they work in school, sometimes they don't get the job that valued for their qualifications. If I sort of saw a few hoodies, can't see their faces, I'd feel intimidated, especially if it was dark exactly. or if I was by myself. They have a good laugh with us and they realise that we're not all fuddy duddies. Um, what job would you like to do when you leave school and what prospects do you think you will have? need pretty much a lot of motivation to run your own business or be in a band or I even be a footballer because they're all really hard to do. You've got to work hard at yeah. so you'll have to like you've got to have the luck you of an opening coming at the right time as well. I think it's, it's a matter of hard work and it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. You've got to have a bit of both. Yeah. But you've got to have the openings to work with. Yeah, yeah. you've got to have the chances. Just, just the the chance off. says, the vacancies. I think it's been an amazing opportunity for them because like, having three sessions with Ruth was, was great, but then they wrote the raps and then it's like, what happens to them after that? So now they've created a song, really, with they've written the music, they've written the lyrics, and they've helped film and edit it as well. So they've been part of the whole process, really, and it's really it's their project. So they've taken complete ownership of it. It, it was feeling I was immensely proud of him, as and as he should be proud of himself, um, to see him develop and to do it in front of people because he, he, he'd sometimes go into the room and, and wish to do it on his own where others, although we could hear him, couldn't see him. I've um, been trying to play along with the beat on the bass and making my own beat up some more with it. You exactly. feel like more motivated so you want to keep on when you do something good that makes you like gives you the get up and go to actually do something better. The support we've had off Merthyr Valley Zones, both with this project and many other projects, has been absolutely fabulous. I think it's the belief in the project that the staff give, that the, the staff always promote the project fully to, to not just Merthyr Valley Zones, but to everyone else. They're just fully, fully supportive of the, the young people that attend the project. I believe this project is just the beginning of what we can, the kind of work that we can do with young people in Merthyr and show the potential and the skills that we have here in Merthyr and the young people are not what you see in the papers and on the TV. I think it's just a privilege to, to work in, in a job where you can you can have an impact on people's lives and, and, and their community so being able to bring in all of these resources and, and see this project grow is, is, is just it's just fantastic really. There's a lesson in everything for us all I think. Even in the darkest hours there's a lesson for us to learn how the other half lives. It's a big world and it would be nice if we could all see ourselves as brothers and sisters, not as alien to each other, not as fearful of the young people or feared of getting old. It's going to happen, we can't do anything about it anyway. We may as well embrace it. We may as well expand our vision and see how everybody lives.